musically, we are, I don't know what if there's a ranking out there, but I think we're number one. Uh, and that's partly because the people of Kentucky have always had a unique musical perspective. So much of American music uh, has its roots in things that were happening in Kentucky over the last 300 years or so. Uh, Appalachia is the birthplace of old time music. The center of Kentucky, the western part of Kentucky generated so much of country and bluegrass. Uh, legendary figures are from Kentucky. Bill Monroe, who basically created bluegrass, is from this state. It's no coincidence that even now, when you've got great Americana artists, but also artists in many other genres, rock artists, rap artists, there's something in the water here that makes people creative. Maybe it's something that's actually born of the adversity and challenges that we continue to face here. Uh, maybe it's a way of translating those challenges through a musical lens that's been uh, particularly captivating and powerful and inspiring for the rest of the world. But it means that the rest of the world knows Kentucky's culture through our musical output. And it's something that inspires me today because I know the orchestra can be a part of that same energy that's given Kentucky an outsized influence on world culture. Well, the Louisville Orchestra has a very special place in the history of American music. Uh, of course, most cities have a great orchestra, that's absolutely true, uh, and the Louisville Orchestra, which was founded in 1937, just after the big flood, of course, the great flood caused a restructuring of so many things in Louisville, and one of them was that people said, we need an orchestra to help lift our spirits. But the Louisville Orchestra quickly became a really fascinating study of what happens when you have a lot of creative minds in the city and the openness of the community to try new things. Uh, unlike a lot of other orchestras, which had a very kind of standard model of basically playing the great classics, mostly from Europe, every once in a while trying a new piece, from its beginning, the Louisville Orchestra was designed to be different, to really focus on living composers, to create what then Mayor uh, Charles Farnsley had this idea of kind of a, a, a Greek city, a, a, a city where the art was just flowing through the town. And that was not at all the standard model of really an older approach to what an orchestra would be. The idea was to break open the mold and make Louisville a destination for living composers and contemporary music, which nobody would have thought would be happening in Kentucky or in Louisville specifically. Yet it was successful. From the very beginning, Louisville was the place that hosted so much new music and so many living composers coming here to see their premieres. And that all happened because of a really crazy idea that the mayor had. He decided that this fledgling new orchestra would go after an enormous grant from the Rockefeller Foundation. Rockefeller Foundation was based in New York, and they wanted to see more new music in the United States. They wanted to see new music that was programmed regularly. They wanted to see a culture change so that we weren't just trying to be like European orchestras, but actually have a consistent degree of interaction with living composers and their work in American cities. Of course, they were really thinking about major orchestras like the Boston Symphony, the New York Philharmonic, for this big grant that they were going to give away as an experiment. But Mayor Farnsley and founding music director Whitney, Robert Whitney, decided to go to New York and made such a convincing case that the Louisville Orchestra should be the recipients of this crazy grant, which was about $4.5 million in today's money, that they actually got it. And that was a total game changer because at that point, the Louisville Orchestra was really just a startup organization. And people around the world were shocked that they actually got the grant, which, as I said, was, was a total game changer. It meant that the orchestra would have this focus, this international audience, and it meant that their programming would have to reflect the values of bringing composers to write pieces for the Louisville Orchestra, playing them multiple times throughout the season and then ultimately recording them. And since the Louisville Orchestra was so unknown at the time, no major record label would pick them up, so they did something that nobody else had even thought to do. They created their own record label called First Edition Records. And it is that First Edition Records series that enshrined many of the greatest composers of that era's work that they made for the Louisville Orchestra. It's everybody from Henry Cowell to Aaron Copland to Elliot Carter uh, to Hina Stera. The, the, the major names of the day all wrote music for this basically startup orchestra 
that developed an international reputation for its daring creativity. And that's not a story that any other city can tell in the United States or frankly, the entire world. Well, when I got here eight seasons ago, it was 2014. And if we're talking about history, we have to be transparent because the Louisville Orchestra had been through a challenging time. There were a couple of very rough years. In fact, there had been ups and downs uh, for the last couple of decades uh, before I got here. So I knew that I had my work cut out for me because the orchestra had just contracted. There had been a bankruptcy and a strike and it was just after the very challenging period of the 2008 downturn, which affected so many arts organizations and nonprofits around the country. Uh, so I knew that, that we had a lot of work to build back the com community's trust. Uh, to do things that would excite people because a lot of people in town had not even really been aware that the orchestra was back and playing. So we had a, just a general perception issue. We had a lot of challenges to work through. Certainly our national reputation uh, had suffered significantly. My thinking was that the way that you build back trust, the way that you get people to be excited about an orchestra is to be creative. You cannot cut your way to getting people to be excited about what you do. You can't just save and, and, and try and uh, find ways to cut budgets and then still be creative. You have to actually think big, dream big, and sell a big vision to the people that can fund your, your orchestra, the people that are going to come as, as ticket buyers and patrons. And that's what we did. Uh, it started off slow. Uh, but it started off successfully. And a lot of what we did was about saying the Louisville Orchestra belongs to the people. I started a thing where anytime I referred to the Louisville Orchestra, I called it your Louisville Orchestra so that people would immediately understand that this orchestra is not some distant institution. It's not a, an orchestra that is somehow apart from the actual people living in Louisville right now or eight years ago, but it actually belongs to them. It's making music for them in this moment and it reflects the community that it serves. Because a lot of people have preconceived notions of what an orchestra is, and many of those are negative notions. They are ideas of uh, elitism, of Europeanism, you might say, or of just being an artifact from the past, something that's not living and breathing, but something that's more like just a museum pr preserving music that uh, long ago had its day and isn't really relevant anymore. So to smash down all those barriers, we actually look to the past to see what was so successful about the Louisville Orchestra's crazy rise to prominence in the 1940s and 50s. And so we said, let's put the focus on living, breathing composers, but let's change up a few things. Let's really talk about music as music. It's not classical music. The Louisville Orchestra is more than just the sum of its parts. It is in fact a platform for great music making in any genre, in any form. So I don't care if you are an incredible rapper, an incredible bluegrass artist, an incredible jazz artist, or a classical musician. If you care about your community and you care about Louisville and you care about collaboration, then the Louisville Orchestra is going to be a home for you. And so we started making our concerts celebrations of music, not these kind of quasi-religious performances that followed one system that had been in existence since the, you know, whatever, 17th century in Europe. And that changed the perception pretty quickly. And that has allowed us to actually think about what the orchestra can really be in the future. And that's where we came up with this idea that the Louisville Orchestra is not just a performing institution. Yes, we play great concerts, but that's a start. Right now, I tell people we're a public service. We're here to make people's lives more connected, to make the community stronger, to give perspective on things that you wouldn't get anywhere else, and to create positivity and pride in being from Louisville, being from Kentucky, that you can't get in any other way. That's our mission. And so that means doing things that, that really take us outside the concert hall in pretty dramatic ways. And this next era, this next period of, of three, four, five years is going to be one of significant growth, change, experimentation, and hopefully creativity and innovation.